Today we're going to look at a limit that we've looked at on the channel before, but here we're going to evaluate this limit using a really beautiful trick, a trick that I hadn't seen before. Well, I found it in the College Math Journal, but it's really mostly based off of an exercise from perhaps one of the most famous real analysis textbooks by Rudin. So our goal is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n factorial over n. And in order to achieve this goal, we'll use the following lemma. So if we've got a sequence of positive real numbers, I'll call them a sub n. And furthermore, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is equal to L, which is a real number. So that just means that, well, this converges and it does not converge infinitely, if you will, which I guess is a type of divergence. Then the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of a n is also equal to L. And so observe that very, very quickly, there's a corollary to this that says that the ratio test implies the root test. And what I really mean by that is that if you can prove the ratio test by some other means, I think the classic way to do it is with the comparison test, then you can easily use the ratio test to prove the root test. Okay, so let's get into the proof of this lemma. And we're gonna start with the precise definition of the limit. So let's say we're given some epsilon bigger than zero then we'll find some capital N, which is a natural number, such that for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the following. And that is the absolute value, or maybe I'll write it down here, the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n minus L is less than epsilon. So like I said, that's simply the precise epsilon n definition of the limit for a sequence. But now let's observe that we can break this apart into some pieces. So uh, we're gonna take this absolute value inequality or this inequality involving an absolute value and turn it into a compound inequality. So this is the same thing as saying that minus epsilon is less than a n plus one over a n minus L which in turn is less than epsilon. And then from there, we're gonna like solve for this ratio. Solve isn't the right word because this is, in a, this is an inequality, but we're gonna isolate the ratio. So this gives us the following. We have L minus epsilon is less than a n plus one over a n, which in turn is less than L plus epsilon. Okay, so that's good. And that's actually important enough to put a box around. Okay, great. And let's observe that that holds for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. So that in fact gives us a large family of inequalities. So notice that the following are true. So we have, for instance, the smallest one, if you will, is L minus epsilon is less than a sub capital N plus one over A sub capital N, which in turn is less than L plus epsilon. Observe that there's one right after that, if you will, which is L minus epsilon is less than A sub capital N plus two over A sub capital N plus one, which in turn is less than L plus epsilon. Well, there's gonna be one right after that as well. And then way down here at the bottom, if you will, you'll have L minus epsilon is less than A sub N over A sub N minus one, which is less than L plus epsilon. So I've shifted it a little bit. I guess if you wanted to, you could take it to end up over there at A N plus one over A N, but this is where we're gonna take it to end. And I've left myself a little bit of a gap here because let's observe that there's gonna be one right before this, and that's gonna be of the form L minus epsilon is less than A N minus one over A N minus two, which is less than L plus epsilon. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is take the product of these inequalities. So let's write that down. We're gonna take the product 
of all of these, but how many are there? Well, we can easily count them by noticing that the index here is a n plus one, and the index at the end is a sub little n. So that makes this little n minus n total terms. And here we need to assume that n is like big enough. Lowercase n is like maybe suitably larger than capital N plus one, if you will. Okay, so anyway, if we take that product, what are we gonna end up with? Well, let's notice over here on the left-hand side, we're taking the product of the same term, lowercase n minus capital N times. So that's gonna give us L minus epsilon to the N minus N. That's just the definition of exponentiation. And then in the middle, well, we're gonna have the product of all of these different terms. So we'll have A capital N plus one over A capital N. The next term will be A capital N plus two over A capital N plus one. And then dot, dot, dot. There's a bunch of terms in the middle and then our next to last term is a n minus one over a n minus two. And then finally we have a little n over a little n minus one. And then over there on the right hand part of this inequality, we have something similar to the left hand part. This time it's capital L plus epsilon to the little n minus n. But now, well, you can probably see what's about to happen. We get a lot of cancellation in the middle. In fact, that's a telescoping product. This a n plus one term will cancel this a n plus one term. This a n minus one term will cancel this a n minus one term. And then furthermore, this a n minus two will cancel something that happens after it. And this a n minus two will cancel something that happens before it. So in the end, we're simply left with this a n lowercase n in the numerator and this a capital N in the denominator. And observe that we're thinking about capital N as being a fixed constant. Observe that it's fixed based on our choice of epsilon. Whereas this lowercase n is variable. We can let that get larger and larger and larger and larger if we want. So let's maybe rewrite this as follows. We'll have a capital N times L minus epsilon to the lowercase n minus capital N is less than a sub little n, which in turn is less than a sub capital N times L plus epsilon to the N minus capital N. But observe that what we're going for here is this nth root of a sub n. So let's take the nth root of all parts of this. So that's gonna give us the following. We'll have the nth root of a sub capital N, and now we're gonna have L minus epsilon raised to the one minus capital N over lowercase n. And then in the middle, we'll have the nth root of a sub N, both of those being lowercase n's. Then nth root of a capital N, and finally L plus epsilon to the one minus n over lowercase n. But check it out. A lot of stuff is gonna turn into one when we take the limit. So this term right here approaches one as we take the limit. So that's a well-known fact. Then this capital N over n approaches zero, which means that exponent approaches one. And then the same thing happens over here as well. So this is approaching one, and then this is approaching zero. So that means after taking the limit, we have L minus epsilon is less than or equal to the limit as, as little n goes to infinity of the nth root of a sub n, which in turn is less than or equal to L plus epsilon. Oh, but in fact, that has to hold true for all epsilon bigger than zero. So since that has to hold true for all epsilon bigger than zero, then this quickly implies that the limit as little n goes to infinity of the nth root of a sub n is also equal to L. Okay, so we've got our lemma proven. Now we're ready to evaluate our goal limit. Now that we've just finished the proof of our lemma, we're ready for our goal. So let's just rewrite this. We have the limit, as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n factorial over n. 
So since we want to use this lemma, we need to write this so that we're taking the nth root of the whole thing. So let's do that. We have this limit as little n goes to infinity of the nth root of n factorial over n to the n. But now we can apply our lemma where we want to think that a sub n is simply n factorial over n to the n. Observe that that means that a sub n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. Okay, so let's see. We're going to have the limit as n goes to infinity of, now we're going to have n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 all over n factorial over n to the n. Okay, great. Now, next up, we're going to put what I call the like terms over each other. So the exponential terms over each other and the factorial type terms over each, over each other. So that'll leave us with the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 factorial over n factorial. And then we'll have n to the n over n plus 1 to the n. Great. Sorry, to the n plus 1. Okay, so now we get a bit of simplification. So now let's observe that this n factorial will cancel this n plus 1 factorial down to simply an n plus 1. Okay, and then this n plus 1 factorial will cancel this exponent of n plus 1 down to an exponent of 1 and leave us with a 1 in the numerator. Now, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit strangely, or it's going to seem a little strange. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n to the minus n. So I just took the reciprocal and then made a negative exponent. But I did that in order to write this as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the minus n. But if we look at it like that, that has a well-known value, and we're not going to calculate it. You can calculate it in a number of different ways, perhaps L'Hopital's rule if you want, but the value of this limit is 1 over e. Okay, so now we found the value of this fairly tricky limit pretty easily using this really nice lemma, and that's a good place to stop.